This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the effects of low indoor airflow on blower motors. And so we're going to simulate low indoor airflow on these units, and we're going to test our PSC blower motor, our ECM constant torque or multi-speed motor, and our variable speed blower motor. Here we have our 240 volt air handler, the door is off and the power is off. We also have these connectors disconnected at the moment. And anytime that you see two connectors like this, it's a good indication that you have an ECM blower motor. So I don't know if you can see that module right back here on the, on the blower motor. And that's why I'm holding this one right here. This test is gonna be on a ECM variable speed blower motor. And this one happens to be a 16 pin connector, just like that one. And so we're going to be putting the cover back on, we're gonna be putting this plugs back in, and we're gonna be turning the power back on. I also wanna point out that we have our multimeter with our wire in our AC amp clamp. And so you can see this big section of wire we have in series with one of the two power legs for this air handler so that we can take a current reading while we're blocking off our airflow. So as you can see, we're presently measuring two amps. Now let's start blocking off some of our airflow. So it sounds like a rocket taking off basically. The blower motor is trying to overcome our static pressure. So what's going to really happen here is you're going to be paying more for electricity if you have a clogged filter or you have maybe a collapse in your ductwork or you have undersized ductwork because the ECM blower motor is going to try to compensate for high static pressure due to a clog or a restriction. And so that's how that works, but the other thing is your blower motor module may fail due to high current and high static pressure. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next air handler. This air handler has an ECM constant torque, otherwise known as an ECM multi-speed blower motor, and you can see there's two plugs in one. Now this one receives 24 volt signals in order to tell it what speed to run at. We're also taking a static pressure measurement on this one and we're gonna watch that rise as we block our airflow as well as our current. It's not gonna be crazy accurate because it's right next to the blower motor right there, but if you wanna learn more about using static pressure for troubleshooting, make sure to check out some of the other videos we have down in the description section below. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this cover on and block our airflow. So right now we're measuring about 0.8 or 0.9 amps, and that is for the total current of the air handler, so that's including the blower motor and also the transformer. Uh, I'm not really worried about that, so it's, it's really measuring right about 0.8 amps as far as the blower motor is concerned, and we have a static pressure of about 0.32 inches of water column. So now we're going to go ahead and restrict the airflow and see this increase. As you can see, as I restricted the airflow, our static pressure rose and also our current rose. And the thing is, our blower motor module is allowing more current to the blower motor to overcome that airflow restriction, but it's not going to be able to. You're going to be paying for a higher electricity bill due to higher current when you have not maybe even just a clogged air filter. You could also be potentially damaging that blower motor module. And so now let's go ahead and move over to our PSE blower motor on the furnace. So here we are at our 120 volt gas furnace. We're already reading 0.27 amps. That's due to the transformer. I'm gonna block the airflow right here. And now let's go ahead and turn our air on. You can see a spike in current at first when the blower motor turns on and then it lessens. And let's wait for that to stabilize. So we're at four amps. Now let's restrict our air. You see, as we're restricting the airflow, our current is lowering. So we have a very, very low current. So a PSC blower motor is going to allow less air 
and it's going to be free spinning in there so it's not going to try to fight the airflow restriction there is no motor module and so that's how that PSE blower motor works So if you have air conditioning on, what's going to happen is you're going to be paying a higher electricity bill because your outdoor unit is going to be constantly running and you're not pushing enough airflow across that indoor evaporator coil for AC mode. And if you're running your furnace in heating mode and you have an airflow restriction, your furnace is going to overheat. You could have temperature limits tripping. You could have the furnace short cycling. So you could have several different issues with that. And if you want to learn more about PSE blower motor troubleshooting, make sure to check out some of the videos that we have down in the description section below. So I hope this video on blower motors has helped. And if you want to learn more about troubleshooting blower motors, make sure to check out the videos we have linked down in the description section below. Also make sure to check out some of the articles on blower motors we have over at our website at acservicetech.com. And if you want to learn more about refrigerant charging, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. We also have made a thousand question workbook along with the answer key. You can use it as a self-study guide in order to learn more. We also have quick reference cards that can be used out in the field in order to check the charge or troubleshoot a system. You can put them right in your service bag. They're made out of polystyrene, so they hold up real well. So all these are available over at our website at acservicetech.com as well as Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.